Hey, it's Steve Cronlund here to talk to you about mallet fingers. A mallet finger is an injury to the terminal extensor tendon. This is the termination of the finger extensors. This extends the distal phalanx or the last part of the finger. This usually occurs from a blow to the extended finger. Most often patients have full passive range of motion, which means that you can move the finger up and down, but the patient can't actively extend the finger. Sometimes there's pain directly over the tendon rupture. Sometimes it doesn't hurt at all. Patients can actually show up with a swan neck, which, which is a zigzag type deformity, as the fingers go up, then down, then up. And this is because of a relative lengthening of the extensor mechanism. And this causes the proximal interphalangeal joint to sag. This is an example of a patient with a mallet finger. She hit the finger on a door about three or four days prior to coming into the office. She's able to flex, but she can't extend the finger. She has full passive range of motion and minimal tenderness. How is a mallet finger diagnosed? We need some sort of an injury to the finger to rupture the tendon. X-rays are required, and this is to check for a fracture. We can use ultrasound, and often ultrasound is quite helpful. And this is so that we can check for tendon retraction. If the tendon is retracted, the patient will heal elongated if they're placed into a splint and not treated surgically. Mallet fingers are treated acutely within the first six weeks non-operatively. This is splinting all the time. If it becomes a chronic situation or they present late, we have to look and see whether or not the tendon itself can be salvaged surgically or they have to go on to a fusion. Compliance is an issue with this splinting. If you look at the different sorts of splints down below here, patients will want to take the splints off and take a shower. As soon as they do that, the end of the finger will bend, the tendon will retract, and it will not heal. We use a non-removable splint made by the hand therapist. This splint actually is stuck to the skin, or really actually stuck to tape, which is stuck to the skin. This is changed weekly or as often as it breaks. It's on for six weeks without bending the end of the finger. Patients are allowed to play all sports. They're allowed to shower in this, and they can use it for just about anything they can tolerate. One thing I can tell you is it's very difficult to play basketball with the mallet finger splint on. So what if there's a fracture associated with a mallet finger? Well, oftentimes these are missed. They're usually the jam finger. They can present late with a bump or with a lag. It's controversial on how to treat these. Fractures that are small, less than 30% of the articular surface, and those that don't have subluxation at the distal interphalangeal joint or the joint at the end of the finger are easily treated non-operatively, the same splinting that we do for a soft tissue or tendon mallet. Those with a large articular piece or a big joint piece which is displaced or subluxation, usually they come together, need to be treated surgically. The type of fixation doesn't usually matter, but something needs to be done to hold the joint extended and also to block the piece back. So K wires, which are little small wires which come out later, are, usually work well. These are splinted for about six weeks postoperatively and then the pins are removed. Here's an example of a girl that presented with an acute swan neck and a fracture. You can see the swan neck here. This was treated with K-wire pinning, and postoperatively she's healed. This is just after the pins, and you notice the restoration of the alignment of the finger. So, mallet fingers need to be treated and seen early. If the splinting is not started and continued with a soft tissue mallet, then the finger will most likely need to be fused. X-rays are important. Ultrasound is very helpful. Thank you.